What up Bugles? It's your boy Nick Zwota from Comics Bugle and I want to welcome you to this video. Let's travel in a time to the 70s of 20th century, to the great bronze age of comic books and let's look at the most popular superhero of Marvel Comics. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1. But before I start, let me introduce you our eShop. Comicsbugle.com, your friendly neighborhood comic book shop in Europe. Accept the great catalog of collected, deluxe and absolute editions, epic collections and omnibuses. We guarantee you eco-friendly half-proof packaging, free shipping in whole EU, an option to pre-order your comic book now and pay for it later. You can also split full price to full payments because we know how expensive these books can be. So check it out comicsbugle.com Also, don't forget smash that like and subscribe button, it means world for us and also check out TikTok and Instagram. Okay, let's check it out. The Spectacular Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1. The content of this omnibus was released before in a few volumes of Marvel Masterwork editions, but this is the first time we get it in an omnibus format. The cover price of this edition is 125 USD, it has 928 pages and it collects a lot of material. Specifically, the Spectacular Spider-Man issues 1 through 42, the Spectacular Spider-Man Annual issue 1, the Amazing Spider-Man Annual 13 and the Fantastic Four issue 218. Okay, let's check Omnibus itself. My copy is with the regular cover, which is actually cover of issue number one. We get here pretty action scene with Tarantula attacking Spider-Man. This cover is work of art by legendary Sal Bushima. The M cover have artwork by Dave Cockrum, also with fantastic action scene. We see here Moon Knight attacking our beloved, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. When we look at the spine, we see classically Marvel Omnibus logo in top, name of the title, names of creators and little Peter Parker slash Spider-Man art down here. The cover is a Marvel Omnibus classic and I'm gonna repeat myself. I just love these designs with all issues covers included in Omnibus. We see covers of all 45 issues included in Omnibus. Under the dust jacket, we have no art. On the name of the title, same spine like a dust jacket and Spider-Man logo in backside. When I open book, we have here classical opening page with classic Spider-Man. I think it is a Sal Bushima work. After that, another opening page with Spider-Lizard art, cover of issue 40. And after that, with a credit page with name of creators working on this omnibus. Next is table of contents and we get also a numbers of pages where we can find specific issues. At last we have here introduction by high rank Marvel editor Ralph Macchio. And finally we get stories. There was a lot of creators which works on stories in the series and first issues was work of legends as Carrie Conway and Archie Goodwin. First intention with the Spectacle of Spider-Man series was to get to see more of a civil life of Peter Parker and connects event of main Amazing Spider-Man series. One could be afraid that it would make the Spectacle series unreadable without knowledge of events in Amazing series. But be calm, that's not an issue here. Series go with their own stories and sometimes refers to event in main series by editorial notes but everything is perfectly understandable and you can enjoy this like a standalone title. I love how we get to see a lot of Spider-Man Rose Gallery here and many times it is a little less known players, as such as a Tarantula or Lightmaster in the first few issues and I will talk about some villains later in this video. Most of the material in this omnibus was written by great Bill Mantlo and I love how we put in the series some sense of continuity. Yeah, most of stories are two or three issues arcs, but Mantlo also sets the foundations for a long-term stories. Such as like a story of Flash Thompson and Cult of Legion of Sun, which I need to say is a fantastic storyline. I need to praise how unpredictable some stories are. 
I read a ton of comic books, books, watch a ton of movies and TV shows, so when I see some pattern, I could predict what happened next, as such are most of us these days. But man, in the spectacular Spider-Man, there is a few story in which I was thinking, yeah, this is pretty obvious and this is what happened. And I was wrong, and genuinely I didn't see coming some of twists. Mantle is indeed toying with readers and doing a great job with a foreshadowing. It makes so much fun to read his stories. He also teams up Spidey with some fantastic characters. I absolutely love White Tiger, Latino superhero who is inseparable part of the spectacular Spider-Man series, but Razorbacks wins my heart. We get to see him only for three issues, but man, I just love this character. He is muscular truck driver in a board costume and he comes to New York save his sister from hands of Legion of Sun Cult. His Arkansas pattern of speech is fantastic and every time you see him in pages he steals the show completely. Razorback's part is a fantastic and fun to read and by letters from readers he also gets a lot of love in early 80s. Yeah, we get a fun letters in the end of almost every issue here and I just love to read them. Well, it's funny, Marvel don't hold back with answers or make fun of competition, and some of them are pretty hardcore. It's fun to read. Except of White Tiger and Razorbacks, we get to see Spidey join forces with Angel from X-Men or Daredevil. Daredevil issues are also fantastic read. I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, these few issues are highlights of this omnibus. What is interesting, these issues was drawn by Frank Miller himself, and actually this was one of his first works what he done for Marvel Comics. Spidey also get a fight with a lot of villains in the spectacular Spider-Man series. We see him few times cross paths with a tragic character of living vampire Morbius, or some bizarre characters as Hypno Hustler, who controls minds by his power of disco hypnosis. You can find here a lot of fun and less known characters and it can spark your love for Bronze Age comic books. In the long term continuity in this omnibus, one of the main villains is a criminal group Magia, which terrorize underlife of New York City and they throw at Spidey lots of their henchmen and that will call Spidey teams up with Moon Knight, who also is trying to destroy Magia. About A-list villains, we get to see Spidey fights against Vulture in a few issues and we also get a little glimpse of Craven. Dr. Connors, aka Lizard, got a really good storyline, and yes, this is one of the greatest in Omnibus. For sake to not spoil you anything, I will not tell you more about it. We also get a fantastic spy story with Dr. Octopus, which is crossover between annual issues of the Spectacular Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man series. Both of them are included in Omnibus. After stories, we get a massive portion of bonus materials. Most of them are sketch arts, promo materials or old story recaps. It is so much fun to browse through them. We also get some covers from collected editions of these stories and afterward, once again, by Ralph Macchio. And that's all. If the spectacular Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1 catch your attention, you can order your own copy in our eShop comicsbugle.com. You can find that link below this video. The Spectacular Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1 is a perfect addition to collection of every Spider-Man and classic comic book fans. It is really fantastic ride and fun to read Omnibus. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out any further videos. In comment section you can wrote us what other omnibuses or collected edition would you like to see in other videos. And that's all. See ya bugles!